We're in hard times and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. The Christian Star began as a newspaper whose news focus of interest was of Christians. But it's become a lot more than that, covering issues of concerns to our community, covering issues of national, state, local, and political agendas that affect us today. The Christian Star is available free at any 7-Eleven store. So pick up your copy of the Christian Star Bilingo free at 7-Eleven today. Necesitas un abogado? Detente. No contratas un abogado simplemente por haberlo visto en un anuncio comercial. Lawyers Consumer Directory te ofrece la solución para todo tipo de problemas legales, tales como inmigración, bancarrota, divorcios, entre otros. Y hasta te ayuda a cómo contratar un abogado. No te rompa la cabeza buscando la solución cuando la tienes en tus manos. Adquiere lo gratis, sí, absolutamente gratis en cualquier 7-Eleven. Ahora puedes demostrar tu orgullo hispano mientras manejas en la carretera con la nueva tablilla o placa de auto hispana conmemorando los 500 años del descubrimiento de Florida por Juan Ponce de León. Obtén tu tablilla hispana este año y harás la diferencia. Solo mil se necesitan para hacerla permanente. Su donativo ayudará a estudiantes con becas. Nuestra comunidad se beneficiará con más programas y servicios. Resalta nuestra cultura, nuestras raíces. Demostremos que la unión está a la fuerza. Obtén tu tablilla hispana en el departamento de vehículos de motor más cercano o llama hoy al 321-277-0850. Hi, welcome to Hispanic Speak Out. I'm Jose Miranda, sitting in for uh, Danny Ramos for a few moments, and he'll be back out to speak to you about the various other topics we will be car uh, carrying out this evening. Um, there's a lot of things going on in the news, and some of you have heard it, some of you may not have. Uh, about 30, 35 years ago, a, a young lady by the name of uh, Kathy Bodine and her boyfriend and a few friends uh, joined together in uh, Nyack in Rockland County in New York. And they went out for a stroll to um, hijack a, uh, a bank. And in the process, the bank is, they try to rob $1.6 million. It's only coming to light now because the, the director, actor, Robert Redford, is about to put a movie out there uh, called And the Company That You Keep, which is allegedly loosely based on the group called the Weathermen, which Ms. Bodine was part of at the time. Um, the sad thing about these events, it would never have come out if Mr. Redford was not having that movie. So this is a, 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 a precursor to the movie, which will be coming out in the theaters uh, next week. Another plug for him. Um, Ms. Bodine and her group were stopped at uh, near the Highway 287 in Nyack in which case Ms. Bodine uh, jumped out of the U-Haul uh, truck that she was on and waved her hands as though surrendering. The police officers that arrived at the scene eased up a little bit, and in the process, her cohorts exited the back of, of the vehicle with automatic weapons and gunned down the police officers, uh, two police officers and, and the guards on the scene. The officers were killed while they were reloading to try to fight back, and they were totally outnumbered because of the automatic weapons, which is another topic that we're currently discussing both here and in the Congress of the United States. Um, the sad part about this is Ms. Bodine is, uh, has been uh, hired by um, the uh, New York University as a professor, a teacher. She's teaching our young and, and uh, spending the time teaching about um, uh, family values, which is one, which is kind of amazing. And um, 
She's uh, also uh, gives lectures on uh, the politics of parole and uh, parole reentry. Uh, Bodine's bounced back into respectability after 2003. Uh, parole comes to light uh, again because of a movie. Other than that, she's been on a down low, keeping a very, very uh, low profile. However, she's uh, been acclimated to the to the, the colleges to our students, to our impressionable young kids, and some of our young kids are already impressionable enough that they hate the government to begin with. Um, she spent 20 plus, 20 plus years in the um, system, and some of the questions that come to light all the time should be, um, how far should a government go or the state go to educate the convicted, ex-felons and this stuff? How much is enough education? How much is enough money? Should we foster the the fact that maybe we can grant them doctorships and stuff like that, so they can go on to a uh, better life? Uh, is it possible that why she was in jail all that time, and she was uh, acting as a uh, in concert with some very vicious people that law that these police officers were killed? And as I said, they were killed in the line of duty while uh, trying to reload because of her and the, the Black Liberation Army. Uh, new standards and new procedures for loading weapons was designed uh, for speed, speed uh, weaponry, you know, to put bullets in the guns faster. Of course, now we don't use them because we don't use Glocks and automatic weapons so we can keep the pace a little bit better. I'm an ex-police officer, and I can tell you for a fact, and I've had the other type of, of weapons to use, that a gunfight is a very short uh, thing that happens in a very short period of time, and it's very, very deadly. The thing about Ms. Bodine uh, that draws uh, tremendous criticism, even from the, uh, the PBA now in Rockland County, who's requested of the school to have her fired, and ask the school further if they want to be involved in remembering what's going on and what happened. On October 31st of every year, um, they have a memorial service for the slain officers. The whole town comes out. All the police officers that knew these gentlemen come out. Police officers who don't know them come out to pay their respect. They've asked the school to come out. If they want to see what the long-lasting effect of these things are, they need to come out and participate. Don't be shy. Don't have to stand back, you know, because you're part of a school uh, social program here. Come out. And every October, they can and witness the tragedy that still continues on. Nine children were affected uh, in this episode. Nine kids who grew up without their fathers. They would never know again how to be <clears throat> with their, uh, their father again. It's a, a touching kind of thing because it's um, something you live in day in and, and day out. You never know when something like this will happen. The outrage here is, is, is that we've allowed someone to come back into society. Should we, as a society, allow them to come back and take center stage in young adults' lives in college? Should we pay for that? And should this woman be allowed to come out of the closet, per se, or should we just allow her to stay in the institution where she should have stayed life sentence for what she did? The movie that's coming out with Robert Redford, for example, is about a uh, ex-Vietnam protester who, in a similar situation, uh, tries to prove himself innocent of being a participant in this. So guess what he does? He hides for about 30 years as a lawyer. Go figure. A lawyer involved in trouble. Shocking, I know, but it is. And, and so we're to put these guys up like Billy the Kid and the Jesse James gang and, and I have Butch Cassidy, the Sundown Kid, and, and types like this to create folk heroes out of these guys so that somehow it's okay that they went and they killed and they maimed and they did what they said. Um, 
it's difficult to say the right or wrongness of some stuff, but when you look at it in its, in its hindsight and in its totality of what they've done, they got together and they deliberately wanted to overthrow the government of the United States and they were going to do so in a violent way. They knew what they were doing. This young lady dropped off her child at a daycare center or with the babysitter before she got herself involved in, in the day's activities, which she knew was a violent act. So it makes you wonder, did she get some sort of redemption while she was in jail? Did God visit her? Did somehow they, in the prisons that, that we now have, they just passed a hand over her head and she no longer thinks about th overthrowing the government because she might make three figures at this point. And so now she's out there. She's not the only one. We have uh, Angela Davis, who's going to uh, do a, a series of things over at Columbia University. Angela Davis, of course, is famous for the Soledad brothers. She was charged in an involvement of trying to break out of jail. And um, to break out of jail, and she was charged with murder. She was eventually acquitted. But because of her, a new tactic was taught in the police academies on the way she escaped and the things that she did, she had done. And so that police officers are aware of when you go into close confinements that people can hide be other, behind other people, use them as shields, and kill police officers. But she's all cool now. She writes books. She's a retired professor, and life is good. We're in hard times, and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. The Christian Star began as a newspaper whose news focus of interest was of Christians. But it's become a lot more than that, covering issues of concerns to our community, covering issues of national, state, local, and political agendas that affect us today. The Christian Star is available free at any 7-Eleven store. So pick up your copy of the Christian Star Bilingual free at 7-Eleven today. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos. Welcome back. Uh, we just had a commentary by Jose Miranda, and now we have another five minutes to cover two topics. This is Jose Miranda and Monica Echeverria, who's uh, one of our contributors to our show. Uh, we have five minutes, guys. Let's talk about, pick it up. Planned Parenthood? Planned Parenthood. Planned Parent. Let me, let me just throw in the lead and then you go. Go ahead. Um, uh, a former uh, executive Planned Parenthood uh, went on major networks this week and announced that Planned Parenthood has sales quotas attached to convincing people have abortions. Really? Yeah. In other words, the managers of all the Planned Parenthoods have had meetings and said, you have to push abortions, we have to meet a sales quota in order to substantiate our financial existence. And one of their main products is giving abortions. So the idea was, this is what this lady said, that they would have to convince people to have abortions. And uh, her conversation went along the lines that these people are highly vulnerable, they're very emotional, they're very vulnerable, and um, these people would be pushing the abortion agenda instead of giving them some kind of advice that would uh, let them decide either way. Did you, who, made the, who made the allegations? Because don't forget, there's those anti-abortion groups. Well, she's also, an employee. She, was, she was an employee who worked there. And she said that she was told directly that she has to meet sales quotas, that they have to meet sales quotas in order to generate funds. Now, of course, that's one executive, and maybe there's another side to the story. But the story that made all the major networks right. was the fact that Planned Parenthood has a financial agenda in pushing abortions. I find that a little bit suspect. Because they, well, do, you know, they do, do cancer research, they do uh, physicals for the uh, women. Uh -huh, they do. They do, they do, they do a lot of, of services, they but in this particular case, they don't provide pre, but they don't, pri they don't provide prenatal care. So when a woman comes in and she's pregnant and she wants an abortion, they don't give her any other advice except have an abortion. But in the state of Florida, 
Planned Parenthood only does abortions up to eight weeks. They don't do past eight weeks. Well, if that doesn't matter in relationship to the advice no, that they're giving but usually, and the sales quota. This is not about the service. I know that they give the service. I know that's the eight-week thing. I know all of that. What it is is it is the fact that according to this woman, they were trying to generate money by pushing abortions on a volume basis. That's it. Okay. Next, let's talk about immigration real quick, Jose. The uh, the group of eight, which includes uh, Marco Rubio, next week will come out with their plan, their final rollout as as to what they plan for the future of immigration, which is still. Um, being bounced around in well in you know Congress. that 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 people crossing the border in the past month has gone up 400 percent i'm sure because it's trying to look for a, a possible amnesty yeah, yeah but i'm also really really quick here I'm, I'm really against them trying to on the back of these people who are already here who are already trying to be legal that we add the burden that they have to pay their way in Let's say it take them 15, 20 years. That's totally unfair. Well, Why? I have what, to pay my way in for 20 years. That's what I've been paying my way for 30 avoid. years. They're trying to. Did, some of you the stuff you know, that's being thrown around is that if you've been here, uh, you're under 30, and you've been raised here to give you. Well, it's okay, open but if you if you can, that's for children. The only ones that apply. That's for, for children. 30 and under, not only I, children. I agree. The, the part for children, but if you came here as an adult, right. pay the fine. I have to pay taxes okay, every that's, that's year. Fine. Well, they will pay taxes once they become citizens. No, they have to pay the back taxes on all the money they made. That's assuming they so they back taxes. How do you know they haven't paid, paid anything? Well, they do pay sales tax. Okay. But they didn't pay income tax. They so they have that's to file. because we chose not to make them, but they've been paying the, the these lawyers and these um, right. immigration offices a lot of money so they can get Thousands citizenship. Right. Probably more than they would pay in taxes. So where is that money? Listen, what they're paying for lawyers is because they broke the law and came into the country legally. What they owe in taxes is what every American has to do. Now, maybe they file and they don't have to pay any taxes. Okay? Some people don't pay taxes when they file. More than half the people but in this country. Remember when the but farmer, if they are, are you asking farmers them workers to, came, yeah. have, these people make I'm asking, minimal okay. wages. They don't even make, right. they're in I'm, the poverty I'm saying level. that they owe this country a financial debt that should be paid. They came illegally, let them pay their fine. Okay, this is Danny Ramos. We ran out of time. We have a segment with Phil Tua. Phil Tua just started a Republican uh, conservative organization in Florida. So we're going to take a little break, and then uh, Phil Tua will come on and talk about the Republican conservative movement in the state of Florida. Thank you, guys. Ahora puedes demostrar tu orgullo hispano mientras manejas en la carretera con la nueva tablilla o placa de auto hispana conmemorando los 500 años del descubrimiento de Florida por Juan Ponce de León. Obtén tu tablilla hispana este año y harás la diferencia. Nuestra comunidad se beneficiará con más programas y servicios. Resalta nuestra cultura, nuestras raíces. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome back to Hispanic Speak Out TV on Bright House Cable 49. We've been on the air for 12 years, just in case you just tuned in. And uh, we are here every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m., and we've been here for the past decade, more than a decade. Uh, my guest for the next uh, segment is Phil Tua, and Phil Tua is launching um, an organization called Florida Conservatives. He's the vice chairman, uh, Nancy Acevedo. Uh, who's a well-known community activist and a conservative. Uh, evidently, I think she's the chairman, but I'm not sure. Yes. She's the chairwoman. Okay. Uh, what, what is the purpose of Florida Conservatives, and why is it Florida Conservatives and not the Republican Florida Conservatives? Because being Republican and being conservative are two different things. Uh, the, uh, the purpose of the organization, first and foremost, after the, uh, the pasting we took in 2008, 2010. A pasting? You guys got pasting, murdered. We realized we realize that, uh, that for uh, many people we have lost first principles. You know, and uh, we want to get back to that. And we're gonna, and we have to start from the beginning. What, what are first, what, first, principles, first principles? First principles are the first principles of the, of the founding. What are first principles? That we are a uh, republic, a constitutional republic, and not a democracy. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, that the sovereignty lies in the people, not in some far off government. That uh, we are a uh, a tripartite government with a legislature, an executive, and a judiciary. Uh, that um, that that the people uh, have have a, a God-given right to their life, liberty, and property, and it is the role of government to protect those things. 
Mm -hmm. And those uh, uh, items like that is what we go okay. into the uh, spotlight. Uh, Phil, this is a Hispanic show. Why do you think the Republicans got such a wipeout well, in the Hispanic community in the last presidential? Really? I, I tell you what, uh, among too, too many Hispanics, uh, there is the idea, rightly or wrongly, that the government should help me. The government should help So you don't think me. the government should no, help No, I'm not saying that. That the government should help me, but it's not the role of government. For the government to help you, they must first take from one group of Americans and give to another. And that is the fallacy of many people find out that if we, as a civil society, uh, take care of ourselves, we, the government should do those things that it is constitutionally empowered to do and not to take the property, i.e. money of one but, group of But don't you think another. that in some cases that the government should be instrumental in supporting people that fall through the net, at least to help them a little bit to get back up? Yeah, we don't, we don't want that, for example, I, that, and that's absolutely, that's absolutely correct, but the safety net has turned into a safety hammock. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for example, we, we, we want the government to have, for, for example, in the modern age, a center for disease control. We don't want people with communicable diseases running around, for, for example. We want the 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 government to to be a catalyst to have uh, private organizations provide things like shelter and food for people that are that, that are indigent as we have before look when Alexis de Tocqueville traveled America in the 1830s he noticed that the people did not look to government for help uh, that Americans as Americans establish organizations to help their fellow man in need why because they love their fellow man when a government when you go to uh, to to big daddy government it's impersonal. It means nothing. You know? Oh, you meet you meet a criteria? We'll give you this. You don't meet a criteria, go home. Okay, are you are you against food stamps? Uh I am personally, absolutely. Okay. Simply because there is there is there is one thing to uh, give somebody uh, you know helping hand and normally uh, before before the Great Depression that was done through churches and through charitable organizations and we all know parents and family members that that grew up during that time period they didn't go hungry so so why why do you think that Hispanics are so pro Democrats they I mean that's the, well it's it, hard 70 percent it was like seventy percent it's, it's always been a, it's always been a seventy the seventy thirty. In Florida, we you know uh, we, we do a little bit better than nationwide simply because we have that large uh, uh, Cuban population that tends to vote one way or another. In a lot of elections, they voted uh, uh, the Cubans re are Republican. Re 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 Republican, not necessarily, but they voted Republican. But like I say, it's hard. It's 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 a hard it's a hard proposition to uh, to fight a political battle against uh, Big Daddy Santa Claus. You know, when Big Daddy Santa Claus is going to give you everything, it's hard to, to instill people the so concept of a, per, a personal, resp you're a personal saying responsibility. Hispanics, okay, are you saying that Hispanics are going for a free ride? That they'd I'm, not, go I'm, for not a saying, ride? I'm not saying no such thing. Okay. Uh, what, I, what I'm saying is that they should be taking care of themselves and their family. Look, if the government, if the government was not in the business of doling out uh, uh, goodies uh, and confiscating the people's wealth, you and I would have a lot more money to give to charitable organizations to keep to ourselves to, her, to uh, help our families. But no, Big Daddy government uh, handles all that. And as such, we got to uh, show the people that that, was no, that, is, that is not the way it's supposed to be. I, uh, you, you look at any of the things, 90% the, of the things that the government does now, they're not in the Constitution. The government is not empowered to do those things, but we have let them do those things with the rubric of, you know, it's caring, it's compassion. And it is not. And it is not. Is it Somebody, a patronage? Because, you because, because, because remember this, remember this. The government the has vote? no money that it does not first take from people. Well, are you saying that they're buying the vote? Is that what you're uh, saying? To an extent. Okay. To an extent. To an extent. And, you know, we had a, a, a classic election that people were bought out with the rubric of uh, nationalized health care. Mm -hmm. And I tell, uh, I tell people, I say, look how well it happened. Well, look what happened to Great Britain once they instituted in 1947. Um, it's not all that great, or Canada, or any other place. Mm -hmm. It sounds good. It sounds good. It's fantastic. The politics behind it, you can't beat them. You cannot beat them. Is, is the, the GOP seems to be split up right now. Very much. You have, you know, ultra-conservatives, and then you have middle-of-the-roaders, and you have... So where is the GOP going? Where do you think it's going to go going into the midterm? Well, um, that is a uh, that that is a good question. Right now, they're doing a, a self evaluation and they're evaluating themselves all in the wrong in the wrong locations. Uh, they think they lost the vote because of uh, immigration or some other such things. Realistically, the uh, Republican Party, particularly in the national level, is in flux. It is it, it is afraid. It is afraid of the media. It is afraid of attacking other politicians. 
and is afraid for standing up for the uh, for the principles that they 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 made it great, you know, the concept of uh, of limited government, free people, freedom and liberty, mm -hmm. and it has gotten away from so that. So what would you tell? I'm, I'm a Hispanic and I'm a Democrat. How would you bring me over to your side? What were you what are you going to tell me to bring me over to your side? Well, I, I would. If I'm a staunch Democrat, I would first say, well, what is your main what is your main issue? Mm -hmm. There there is there is uh, the 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 answer to every issue it seems is government is going to help you. What is your main, what is your what is your issue? There is a a personal economic private sector solution for everything, but it's never tried. It's never tried and that's what we're trying to get across. But you know, it, it's hard right now because you know what? A lot of major corporations are going offshore. You know, companies, Fortune 500 companies that used to manufacture here, that's correct. are going to China. You know, they've closed down their plants. I know one particular company has 60,000 employees here in the United States. All 60,000 have gone to South America, Mexico, Ecuador. They're all gone. Out of 60,000, they have less than 2,000 employees now in the United States who are salespeople. That's it. No manufacturing. So a lot of people are out of jobs and they need. So where do they go if they're in the street? They haven't eaten. They, what, what happens? Well, I ask you, I mean, why, I, are they, why, are those, why are those companies moving overseas? Well, why, they're moving they? overseas because they can get employees to work for a dollar versus here for twelve dollars. Well, they got a better economic climate in, in in those places. Yeah, they do. They got a better economic climate, and we have become, as a country, we have the highest corporate tax rate, the highest level of regulation. Even even for how big does the light bulb have to be to how much water flushes in a in a in a in a in a, in a bathroom is controlled by the government. When mm -hmm. you go to those countries, yeah, labor may be a little bit cheaper, not as productive as American labor now. And as we see during the 90s, a lot of companies that went overseas had to come back because the labor is not, yeah, it's cheap, but it's not as productive or as effective as American labor. Okay. Phil, I'm going to have you come back so that we can cover again, but this is the uh, end of this particular segment. This is Phil Tua, and uh, he belongs to a new organization which has been launched by Nancy Acevedo and himself as the vice chairman called Florida Conservatives. If you're interested in the Florida Conservatives, the telephone number is 407 314 1344 407 314 1344 this is Danny Ramos I've been here for 12 years and I will be back next week God willing we'll see you next week on Hispanic Speak Out Necesitas un abogado detente no contratas un abogado simplemente por haberlo visto en un anuncio comercial Lawyers Consumer Directory te ofrece la solución para todo tipo de problemas legales, tales como inmigración, bancarrota, divorcios, entre otros. Y hasta te ayuda a cómo contratar un abogado. No te rompa la cabeza buscando la solución cuando la tienes en tus manos. Adquiérelo gratis, sí, absolutamente gratis, en cualquier 7-Eleven. The Christian Star began as a newspaper whose news focus of interest was of Christians. But it's become a lot more than that covering issues of concerns to our community, covering issues of national, state, local, and political agendas that affect us today. The Christian Star is available free at any 7-Eleven store. So pick up your copy of the Christian Star Bilingual free at 7-Eleven today. Ahora puedes demostrar tu orgullo hispano mientras manejas en la carretera con la nueva tablilla o placa de auto hispana conmemorando los 500 años del descubrimiento de Florida por Juan Ponce de León. Obtén tu tablilla hispana este año y harás la diferencia. Solo mil se necesitan para hacerla permanente. Su donativo ayudará a estudiantes con becas. Nuestra comunidad se beneficiará con más programas y servicios. Resalta nuestra cultura, nuestras raíces. Demostremos que la unión está a la fuerza. Obtén tu tablilla hispana en el departamento de vehículos de motor más cercano o llama hoy al 321-277-0850.